Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Rockin' K. If you don't know who we are, we're some Americans transplanted into Germany. We're doing the homesteading thing here in Germany. And the last couple of days I've been working on some electrical. And so let me show you what we've been up to. Hey y'all, so we are going to get started on some electrical work. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of sunshine. Um, it's really overcast, it's just making it a little bright. So I have to get electricity, well, there's already electricity out there, but I gotta get it correct. Um, there's a four wire going down to our lower barn, which is down there. And I need five wire. I need a real ground and a real neutral because that's the way it's supposed to be. So the wire goes from down there. It comes through the wall right there. Goes up over that door and then into the house. We're gonna change it up. So instead of it going up over that door, um, I put cable canal in the ground last year because I have a hybrid inverter in that first garage. So I went and picked up the pavers from the house all the way across to that box that's on that wall right there. And I put two, two cable channels um, in those cable channels, I ran the cable to supply my hybrid inverter because if you know anything about a hybrid inverter, it uses shore power, battery, or um, solar, and it doesn't feed electricity back on the shore power. It only takes it um, short grid power, shore power. So I wanted a really good run going out there. So um, the original power that went to the garage area number one was on that four wire that goes up over around and yeah there's so much excess wire so the plan was get a good clean wire plus it was only um four wire um, i only need single phase out there for that system so i ran a good three wire out there um, earth cable, even though it's in cable canal. And um, I ran two data lines and my, my thoughts were um, to have internet out there so that when I go to, um, and I upgrade my equipment to the Victron Energy equipment that I could go ahead and have um, internet running and be able to monitor my system. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a, a wireless access point out there and that's the way I'm gonna do my internet. So what I'm gonna do is where I strung the two data cables in the canal, because it's a pair of canals, I'm gonna pull a new wire through because it is a bulky wire. Um, it is a uh, four millimeter wire, uh, four, four millimeter wire, five conductor, um, and it's gonna feed this box. It's also gonna feed my compressor. So my compressor is gonna branch off and it's gonna have this, this switch on the wall because the way it is right now, I have to go down to the lower barn and turn it on. And I put it in the lower barn so I didn't have to listen to it when I was in the workshop. So we're going to start at the far end of the run and work our way in towards the main breaker box. And in part of that, I have to get this box ready for the wire to pass through because it is a brand new box and it has no openings. It has the little knockouts for it, but it has no openings. So we're gonna put these cable glands into the box, which means we gotta drill it out and get those on there. And I'm going to have an additional 
uh, circuit coming into the box, and that, that circuit's actually going to be the, um, the solar microinverter, and it's going to backfeed through this box all the way up to the house. Um, this gives me a good solid line going up to the house because right now we're, we're back feeding it through the workshop line. Um, and the workshop line from the box to where the, the solar microinverter is plugged in is a good 60 meters. So somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 100, 100 feet and change, something like that. And when we get this strung, it's going to be probably 20, what is it? I ordered, I think 30 meters total of cable. So we're gonna really shrink it down because it's gonna go from 60 meters because what it does is it goes from the house over there it goes all the way into that barn. Then it comes all the way back, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's a conduit up there. And then it comes all the way across and then goes all the way down to the lower barn. That's the way it was built um, when I bought the house. I've been shortening up all the runs and changing it up because there's sub boxes everywhere in this, in this farm. And all the sub boxes are wired with four wire, not five wire, because we do use three phase in various places on the, on the homestead. Now I'm installing proper five wire, which the first run of course is the lower barn, which is what we're doing today and tomorrow and probably the next day, because I have to pull wire through existing, um, cable channel that's in the wall. So it's going to be a little difficult. Hopefully it fits and hopefully we can get it all pulled. But first step first, we're going to get some holes knocked in this box and get it ready and then go get it on the wall. I also have the new plug for the compressor. The compressor has a 32 amp um, three phase plug and it only pulls six amps. <clears throat> I know they did this because um, you can find 32 amp receptacles on any job site on any, you know, I don't, I have, I have a 32 amp receptacle down there and it's only four wire anyway, but we're going to change the receptacle to a 16 amp receptacle and change the compressor to a 16 amp plug because it's only six amps. It doesn't need a 32 amp plug. Plus it neatens everything up, makes it all pretty. Um, and I'm going to put a switch for the compressor here or right there so that when I'm in the workshop and I need the compressed air, I can just reach over, flip it on, and I got compressed air. The compressed air system is being uh, designed um, to have drops everywhere. So there's a drop there and there's a drop over there for right now. Um, I will be putting drops on this wall and on that wall behind me so that there's compressed air everywhere. And, you know, um, I don't have to drag hoses across the shop and do all that. And most importantly, when I do this switch, I don't have to go to the lower barn and turn on the compressor. So enough jib jabbering and talking. Let's get to work. Okay, so like I was saying, we got to put the cable pass-throughs into the box. So the nice thing is only two of these are actually tightened. We can get this box opened up. And I bought this box because it was all set up. Got it, got it from good old Amazon. And has all the circuit breakers in it already so that all I need to do is supply power to it and then all my outlets work and I'm going to um, use one of the circuit breakers to 
have the solar inverter come in. So my thoughts are the big cable has to come in here for the big um, ground fault interrupt breaker and it'll attach here and then it goes through the bottom and so I'll put the solar one in the one on this side. So I have to drill a hole here and here. They are two different sizes but I got a step drill bit which is perfect for this job. So we'll go ahead and put some holes in this box. Now I'm not worried about having the rubber sealing gasket on this because it is not in a wet area. Um, but if, if you're doing this and it's in a wet area or an area prone to getting maybe rain or whatever, you're going to want to make sure that it has like the rubber gasket like this so that water doesn't come into the box. So we'll go ahead and drill some holes and be careful not to go through the breaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep increasing the steps until I get to the right size. And now the box is ready to go on the wall. So let's go do that. All right, so here we are in the lower barn. And like I was saying earlier, um, this is the end of the run. So this is the last stop. So the plan is to put the box up and then work our way back towards the house. So I had already sat and discussed with Rachel and we decided where we were gonna put the box. Let me straighten you up a little bit. And she said she wanted the box here. It kind of makes sense. It's in the center of this wall. It's where we would most likely use power. Um, so I already marked the spots to drill. So we'll go ahead and we'll get that drilled. And yeah. So we're gonna do this with six millimeter inserts. I have a cement drill here. Well, drill bit. I'm using um, the hammer function on my cordless drill to drill the holes. So let's get them in there. All right, now we got some holes. Now we just got to put some inserts in. So I went ahead and shut that barn door because it was killing us light-wise. But we got to get some inserts into this wall. And just so you know, yes, it is an adjustable wrench, but it's also a hammer. All right, now we got the inserts in the wall. We'll go ahead and get the box up. Take it off a hammer. Get them all started.
and then switch to a longer bit because the box and then we're gonna run them down Now I'm trying to be careful so I don't snap the ears off this box. Because it is just a plastic box. And Yep, there she is. She ain't going nowhere now. But let me show you a little bit of it on this box now that she's on the wall. So, the box has the three-phase plug. And then <clears throat> on each phase of the three phase coming in, it does have a an outlet so that we can hook other stuff up besides three phase. But it also came with all the circuit breakers and the GFCI uh, breaker to make sure that, you know, it, re it removes the, the shock hazard of if you, have a short end or you get shocked, it will pop the, pop the breaker so that uh, nobody gets hurt. But like I said, this is only stop one. Now we gotta go from here up top and use the heavy cable. We'll go up the wall and across. And if you look up there, is where it's gonna go through. But we also have other stuff here, and that's the next job for this electrical system, is I'll walk you through the barn. Pardon me, I'm trying to make sure I don't lose my bit. So right here, we have our old um, wood boiler that it's from the 70s, that's going. It's going, going to the junkyard. Then we have right there, there's the air compressor, nice little three cylinder air compressor, is the 32 amp outlet. So the 32 amp outlet's gonna get replaced and then you can see up here is a bunch of cable. That's the cable that's feeding it and it goes through the beams up there and into the garage, that's actually a window going into that garage because there was a barn first and then they built the garages. That's my best guess. I, I don't know, or was the garage there and they had windows out of the garage? I think that's the way it worked. I think they had the garages built and they decided to build this barn. And so they just have windows into the barn. I'm going to close them off and use them as shelves on the other side. So that's way later. But we do have to remove this 32 amper. Problem is the line problem is the line is is powered, so we do not want to mess with that right now. Uh, I will be messing with it later on. But that's step one done. We'll go ahead and go up top and I guess we'll unhook the power so that we can maybe work on this line. Yeah, let's do that. All right. <clears throat> All right, so we're up here in the house and let me show you what we got going on. So up here is where that power comes from. So it goes on this wire, it goes around this room, it goes across the ceiling, and then actually goes up inside, if you look here, here's where it comes across the ceiling, goes through those bricks, and then goes out, up over the garage door, all that, up over the workshop door and all that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to unhook it here so that that leg is no longer. And then what we'll do is, that'll allow us to go down and work on the, um, the outlet and plug for the compressor, because now that line will be dead, 
and I can move stuff out of the way and um, get everything ready to do the rest of the cable pull because we'll pull cable from that box into the into the garage from the barn to the garage from the garage through the conduit in the ground to the basement and then my plan is to eliminate one of the wires in my electrical box because the heater in the basement is no longer and this wire here down here has a conduit that goes down to the basement and powers the heater but the heater doesn't exist anymore um, as you know we heat with wood so all of our heat is coming out of the wood barn and I did away with my oil board oh oil, oil boiler um, we made that move for two reasons we want to be self-sufficient i.e. no oil no no heat well we can get firewood we can burn wood all I need to do is provide it power which I'm doing because I have that off-grid system that is in the works so I'm gonna get you set up I gotta get me a, a way to get up you know to this box and I'll set you up on a tripod and we'll go ahead and get that power unhooked. All right, now you're on the tripod. I'm gonna go up there and I have clip style um, connectors on these wires. So um, what happened is when I did the demolition of this room, there was extra wires and all kinds of stuff that I've already eliminated from this batch of wires. So I should be able to just unclip it and pull the wires out, no live wires will be exposed at that point, so there should be minimal risk. Let's do it. That's one. That's two. That's three. And one more. And that's that run. So the only run left on there is the run that feeds the room over there and so this is actually going to be moved on to another circuit and then um this room in here will come off of this this circuit and because this room has zero three phase in it um i can label the wires correctly and have an earth um neutral and a load wire and there'll be an extra wire that isn't being used, but I can label the this end of the wire correctly and that and the end in the um, electrical box. They make little sleeves you slip on. You can heat shrink wrap, you know, heat, heat them up so that the wires are identified properly. Um, because this is an older uh, schedule wire, it has red in it. Um, so it has red, gray, blue, and black. So what we'll end up doing is um, slipping a yellow and green onto one of the wires to designate it as the ground. We'll slip a brown onto one designated as the load, and we'll just use the blue as the neutral, which is the correct color, and then we'll just have the extra black wire in there. Um, we won't use it so but that this way I can feed the, the rest of this room that was the washer singing a song saying 
I'm done. Yes. So anyway, the LG washer, uh, it's been one of the greatest things I've ever bought, but it uh, plays you a song when it's done. So anyway, um, enough of that. But now you can see right there is the wire that goes out to the compressor. And pretty much it's all it powers is the compressor. Or all it was powering was the compressor. So that run is now dead. We will test it at the other end to make sure. I'm 100% sure because I had to chase that line. But we're going to test it anyway because electricity will kill you. But like I was saying, we can groove this wall and actually inset a uh, junction box into this wall so that we can utilize that wire. I'll probably, if I can, I'll pull a new wire through. Um, but in in the instance that I cannot, we'll just relabel the wires because I'd rather have new wire anyway because old copper gets brittle and will snap, things like that. But anyway, now back to the lower barn. All right, so we slid the compressor on out of the way. Um, what we're gonna do now is test this outlet. Let me find my screwdrivers. So we'll pull the the lid off of here, if we can. I'll save this outlet, even though I'll probably never use it. But I'll save it anyway. Okay. So we got the lid off. And I'll test each wire here. Make sure everything is off. And we are good. So. Oh, here we go. So I noticed something interesting on this outlet, and I'll show you this. So this is a big no-no in the electrical world. Let me flip you around. If you look in here, right here, this is supposed to be the neutral lug for the three-phase. If you look, there's a wire that comes up. First off, it's labeled as a ground wire. Second off is there's two wires in here. If you look, there's one and two, but this wire goes up over and to the ground post on this outlet. That's a big no-no. You should only have a ground tie at your main service box creates too much, uh, too much paths for electricity to flow. And yeah, no bueno, uh, definitely not code. Let's get these out, straighten them out so I can get them out of the box. So here's a little bit better of a view of what we got going on here. Oh, let me flip you around. See that? They got this wire jumping over to the, the ground post for that three-phase out, outlet. You don't do that. So 
I'm glad I took this job on again so that everything is correct. And we're going to pull that wire right out of there because it does not belong in there. If it's going to let me pull it out, there she is. All right, now that that's out, we'll straighten these out a little bit. And that wire is no longer. So as I was saying, I'll show you, there's only four wires. It doesn't work for me. I need that neutral and I need a real ground. I don't need them hooked together. They were sending, they were sending power, load wire. They were using that neutral as a load wire. That is no bueno. All right, let me go get some tools so I can get this off. All right, let's find the right bit. I do believe it's, nope, one more bigger. My will bigger. Yeah, there she is. So we'll get that out of there. No need for a 32 amper. All right, now she out the way. Now, we're gonna put the new outlet on. And this new outlet, we're gonna put kind of in the same place. The reason being is there's gonna be a deck here. Um, I'm gonna have my compressor underneath a exit from the upper workshop. And it keeps it out of harm's way and the structure around it will kind of absorb some of the noise so that um, I don't have to listen to the compressor all day. So we'll get these out of here. Get this opened up. So we're gonna pull a second line that's gonna feed this outlet. And like I said, there'll be a switch in the workshop. The wire will come back and drop in the top of this. Uh, I wanna put it more, you know, as, as close to the edge as it possible, but I don't wanna break this block. So we're gonna go ahead and put it, so you, if you know the center block is gonna have a, an edge for its end face. And I wanna make sure that I don't go through that end face. So we're gonna put it nearly in the same spot as we put the other one, or as they put the other one. And so I am gonna attach it with four, not two. Uh, but we wanna make sure that where the cable comes in is gonna be low enough that we don't end up with it interfering with the decking. So I do think we are going to put it probably, I think I'm going to put it right there. So I have my pencil with me. We'll try to get some marks on here. And of course, not long enough. Let me go get a marker. All right, now I got one of my hole markers. Hopefully it's uh, gonna work for this because they're kind of small holes. Ah, but we'll try it. So we said we we're gonna go right about Right about there. Yeah, save right there. Now, hopefully, 
Yep. All right, so I did bring my bits with me. So we'll go ahead and do some six millimeter holes in here quick. All right, we'll put some inserts in. And get her mounted. Now I am using longer screws because these type of inserts, uh, I am in the hollow point in the block. And that's the nice thing about these inserts is they will actually open and pull against the inside of the block. You know, in that hollow cavity. Switch bits quick. Oh, that's way too big. I need a smaller one. Here it is. So that should be low enough and actually out towards the end of the wall enough that I can actually use the outlet for something else. So we'll go ahead and we'll just get it stabbed back together for now. Don't want to lose any of the pieces. So we'll slide it all together. Now there's my 16 amp socket. Now I do have to address this plug on the compressor. So with that said, we need to take her apart. So oh, there's two screws down on the inside. I'm going to need my other screwdriver. And if this is braided cable, which it probably is, if it doesn't have furls on it, I'm gonna have to go get my furl kit. Because I like it being correct. And you can't just shove braided, braided cable into these ends and expect them to be a hundred percent. They'll be close, but the right way is with, uh, with little cable furrows crimped on there. And I own it, so why not do it? Especially when I wanna get as much life out of this compressor and I don't want to fire. So. All that, and it has light gauge wire in here. I'm trying to get it untangled so you can see. 
There is tiny wire in here. It's enough for the six amps that the uh, that the the compressor does pull. But I find it amusing that there was a 32 amp plug and this tiny wire. So what I want to do is transfer these wires over in the same exact spots that they're in so that I ensure that the compressor is wired in the correct phase. So that's the thing with three phase energy. If the phases don't go one, two, three, and maybe they go one, three, two, it will try to turn the compressor backwards and that doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is try to make sure I wire the plug 100% identical to the way it is now because I knew it was turning in the correct direction. And then on the back side, when I do go ahead and um, wire the, the plug, I'm going to bring down a piece of equipment and hook it up to make sure that my other piece of equipment rotates in the same direction. So I have my splitter, I have my um, uh, whip saw and all this that, you know, while I don't, I'm not typically going to run it down here, I know that if I do, it's going to be turning in the correct direction. Because the last thing I need is to bring down my compressor, or not my compressor, but my, um, huh, that wire fell right off that phase. So I'm going to go get my ferrules and I'm going to go get my, um, my stripper because that wire was actually frayed and broken apart. That's the risk of putting these in, in terminals without putting ferrules on them. So I'll be right back. All right, so I got the crimpers. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these off now since they're frayed and all that, no sense. I did take note of the direction that they were on the plug so that when I put them on the new plug, they will be in the right order. And then I just have to make sure that the, the outlet is correct. So we'll go ahead and feed it through. And believe me, folks, I've made this mistake more than once. Not, not fit it through the housing, do all the wiring, and then have to undo it all to, yeah. Mm. Done that a couple of times. So we'll go ahead and strip these back. All new fresh ends on them. Get the crimper out. All right, now we got 100% good connection. So we'll start out with the ground wire, since I know exactly where that goes. Get her in there. And I need my screwdriver, which I buried underneath everything. Or did I?
There it is. All right, so groundwater first. Let me bring you down with me. So we'll do the groundwater first. And that's the ground then to make sure we go in the right direction it went black blue and brown So, black in phase one, right there. Blue in phase two. And brown in phase three. Now you might notice there is no neutral in this. A neutral is not required on this motor, just a ground. It will operate with just the, the, uh, the three phases in the ground. So now we'll slide it up on there. And get it together and then lock it down all right now So that is part two done. So I'm at a toss up. I don't know if I'm going to string this cable or the big cable. I think I'm gonna do the big cable because the big cable will give me power back here right away. And if I need to use the compressor, I can plug it in on that box because that box actually has the, um, the outlet that the compressor would need. So that should I need my compressor because I have to drill some holes in the wall um, to fish the wire through and make it all right. So I do think that I'm going to take on the, um, the big wire first. So we'll do the big wire. All right, y'all. So I am partway through editing the video of redoing all this wiring and um it's going long so i'm going to stop this portion of the editing here and get it up to you it is on the long side um but i want you guys to understand how i did what i did so i left it long i didn't edit it and chop it up a lot uh, I would like you guys to be able to do the job. If you want to do the job yourself, you know how to do it. Um, so I'm not going to chop it up and edit it down and shrink it all down. I want to uh, make it so that you guys can, can learn uh, from how I did mine. This way, if you want to do your similar, you can do it that way. Um, but please, if you like the videos, if you like our content, please like and subscribe. 
Um, it helps us get f closer to our goals. And in keeping with my motto, if you're thinking about family, you're thinking about friends, give them the WhatsApp or the WhatsApp. You know you'd love to hear from them too. And until part two of this rewire, Auf Wiedersehen. Thank mm -hmm. you.